What's going on guys? Beastly Gamer here. Welcome to the channel. What are you guys seeing in front of you? Some Destiny, of course. I got a lot of footage saved up from Destiny. I had a great time playing this game. Uh, it really, it did something to me, man. It, it, it really scratched an itch that I had for a new kind of first person shooter. This game is, is just a hell of an experience. The single player campaign is a hell of an experience. The multiplayer, what I'm doing now in the Crucible, is a hell of an experience. I had a great time. You guys let me know at the end of the video, what was your favorite thing that you did on the Destiny beta? It doesn't matter what the platform was, just let me know in the comments below. Uh, I want to talk to you guys about some news that broke today, uh, and it's about EA. EA joining the subscription bandwagon. Uh, they've been, I guess, watching some of their competitors and wanting to move into uncharted waters and try some new things, uh, you know, going after, you know, dollars that previously they wouldn't have even thought of going after. And uh, it's a pretty good business model. I got to say, if, if you're in this thing to make money, you've got to try to find ways to innovate constantly. you got to constantly, uh, you know, change with the times and, and, and adapt and and look for you know new overhead constantly it's all about the revenue and uh they're doing this new thing a subscription based service very similar to gamefly very similar to netflix uh where you actually pay a premium through xbox one uh just in case you guys didn't know it is an xbox one exclusive service as of right now but you pay this premium or you can pay a monthly premium to have access to certain EA titles, have access, early access to games, and uh, you know this will actually carry over to saves if you if you buy the actual retail version of a game. So it actually it, it's a pretty good value. I'm going to read you uh, one of the articles that I was reading today on this story. It appears EA and Microsoft have been paying attention to Netflix and PlayStation Now, which opens its doors to all PS4 owners in two days. Well, actually, the PlayStation Now beta is open now to everybody, and are combining to offer a different subscription service for gamers. The EA Access Pass is available currently in beta for $5 per month, or $30 per year and give subscribers unlimited access to a vault of games. Right now the list covers FIFA 14, Madden NFL 25, Peggle 2 and Battlefield 4 with the promise of more titles coming soon. Not enticed by the promise of last year's games plus 10% discount on EA games, DLC and in-game currency. They're also adding in early access trials for this year's round of EA Sports games, Madden, NHL, NBA Live, FIFA, and Dragon Age Inquisition. The amazing thing about these trials is that they go up five days before these games go on sale and they let your progress carry over to the retail version of the game. That's a pretty good deal, uh, considering. Now if you're a really big EA fan, I'd say this is a great uh, thing to grab. Um, it's not coming to PlayStation 4, and if you guys don't know why, I'm going to tell you now. Sony actually had this deal on the table, and they declined it. They do not want this service. They do not see it as a value to PlayStation users. And I think I understand where they're coming from. There's been some videos uh, out there, and, and some YouTubers, uh, you know, reporting on this and and everyone has a motive even I have a motive everybody has their own uh, you know likes and dislikes and, and people are gonna word things in a way that best suits their interests so I want to try to word this in a way that doesn't make me appear to be totally one-sided here because you guys know I'm a Sony guy um, this is the other part of the article I was reading it says Sony said no to PS4 EA access program because it's not good it's not a good value for PlayStation fans quote we don't think asking our fans to pay an additional five dollars a month for this EA specific program represents good value to the PlayStation gamer Sony says um, I kinda understand that I, I, I'm not gonna sit and and say that I don't uh, and it's not just because I'm not a really big EA fan EA has made some games that I really have enjoyed for many many years and they've also made games and release games that have broken my heart uh, Battlefield for instance I know a lot of you guys are still feeling that burn I know guys like 9 to 5 gamers who uh, you know bought the new UFC and and feels that burn the EA they they have a track record of 
you know, uh, releasing subpar games. And so, for me to trust them with a premium service to play subpar games, or even some good games, is something I, I'm not willing to risk at this time. Now, when you take into account how many games EA releases every year, I don't know exactly the count, but I would guess EA probably releases somewhere around 40, between 40 and 60 games a year. Uh, and that's across all platforms. And they're a very successful company. They're working hard at game, gaming all the time. If you take into account what the PlayStation Plus gives you uh, versus any type of EA subscription model, uh, you, you see a vast, I, I guess you'd see a huge benefit for having the PlayStation Plus over this kind of prescription service. And this is an old article, it's two months old, but it says, In reaction to Microsoft's change in games with gold, Sony ups the ante for PlayStation Plus. It's now, uh, it's now two games for each of its three current platforms each month, available for a month with entitlement lasting a lifetime as long as uh, one's PS Plus, as long as you're a PlayStation Plus subscriber. So what does that mean? You got the PlayStation 3, you got the PlayStation Vita, and you got the PS4. I have all three. Every month you get two games for each. That's six games per month for free that you get to keep for paying for your PlayStation Plus, which you have to have with PS4 now to play. That is 72 games per year. Okay? Uh, tell me that's not a great value. You get 72 different games for, you know, multiple platforms for uh, a $49 premium that you have to have anyway. And so I think that's why Sony is not really, you know, big on getting this EA All Access. Uh, also, Sony is really going to be pushing the PlayStation Now. I, I heard a lot of people, you know, talking about paying $5 for four hours of a, of a game on PlayStation Now's beta. It's a beta. Do you understand what that means? Sony would be absolutely out of their mind to pay to, to charge someone those prices for a finished product. Right now, they're just breaking in the bucks. For whoever wants to participate in the beta, they're going to pay whatever they want to pay. If you don't want to pay money, don't join the beta. If you see the beta and there's a game you want to try, they're going to overcharge you. They're going to see what people are willing to pay for. If you check out that beta, there are tons of different games and they're all priced differently. You guys can see the beta now. They're all priced differently. Some games you can pay $2 and have it for, you know, eight days. I mean, there's so many different uh, pay models with the PlayStation Now. So it's not just $5 for four hours. It all depends on different games. And PlayStation Now is also going to have a subscription service. And I'm guessing that will be very similar to Gamefly. So, I mean, if you ask me, PlayStation Now, $20 a month, maybe? Uh, I think maybe between $15 and $20 a month for the monthly premium which will give you access to all PlayStation back catalog. I couldn't see them going any higher than $20 simply for the fact that Gamefly only charges you $15 per month. So there's already competition. They've already set the standard of what you're going to pay. And they've already set the standard of what is unacceptable to pay. So Sony being the company that they are already, they have an idea of where they want to go. They're just throwing it out there into the pool to see who, who bites. And so that's my thoughts on uh, on EA's All Access Pass, all the Xbox guys, you guys love your Xbox Ones. I'm happy you guys are getting this. I just don't see that it being a really good value for PlayStation platforms. You guys, comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think about this story. I'm the Beastly Gamer, and I'll see you guys next time.